Uh, let's, go, let's skip the boring part. <laughs> okay, those are the rules. <laughs> that's my name and uh, that's the Duckware site and so on. Okay, this is the outline. Um, the first part is just state of the art. Uh, if you have followed the presentation uh, this morning about mobile security, you probably already know everything which is written in this, in this part. Um, then we, we, we will go on talking about Tor mobile phone and uh, other strange devices. Uh, as, we are, as we are a bit late, uh, the first part will, will go out very fast. Um, okay. Uh, the, the main problem with phones is that uh, mobile phones right now uh, are um, really powerful devices. They are almost like computer. Uh, they got a lot of computational power, high speed data network access, and they are running on real operating system. Uh, the other problem is that phones are personal. Uh, raise hand, please, if anyone in this room doesn't own a phone. I don't think that, oh, you are my hero. <laughs> you are cool. <laughs> Uh, the other problem is that phones are personal and we keep them everywhere we go. Uh, and usually we, we go out and we, we never leave the house without them. Uh, phones are critical uh, because there are catalogs, address book entries, uh, email, SMS. You know, if, if you were there, uh, if you were here at uh, Christian uh, presentation about uh, the Android rootkit, he, he dumped the, the content on, of his. Uh, uh, address book and uh, his SMS database and so on. Uh, the other problem is that uh, when, you're, when we are talking about phones and uh, mobile phones operator and so on, uh, there's too much trust involved in the, in the connection. Because I as a user, I trust my phone because I use the phone to make phone calls. Uh, the phones have to trust the operator which is the entity which gives them access to the network and operator have to trust themselves to route uh, calls around the globe. So what happens? That the user have to trust the operator as well. Um, why operators are using so much trust between them? Because they want the things to go out smooth. Because if the, if the calls, if, if texting, if anything uh, won't go out smooth, the user will be pretty angry. <laughs> Uh, the other problem is that there's too much heterogeneity. heterogeneity. Uh, I mean, usually it's not a big problem, but you know, when, when you have to work with different communication, closed communication protocol, or a different kind of network, or a different hardware landscape, you, you get problems when, when you're trying to stick them together and secure the, the environment. Uh, the other issue are, well, phones uh, are really powerful, as I said before, but they, they were born for uh, making call and uh, sending SMS, uh, so the, the operating system adapted to, to this behavior. And in, in this screenshot, uh, it's my, my phone. I was, I was trying to access my Gmail uh, address. And as you can see from, from the keyboard, I can, I can only input uh, letters. The, the, there are even numbers or le le let's not talk about uh, special, special symbols. Uh, I need to, to push that that button over there, and I, I need to change the cable. Uh, so, what does it mean that that difficult password are difficult to enter, and the user will, will usually, usually uh, choose a, a, a easier password? The other problem is the screen size. Uh, I'm trying in this screenshot. I, I was trying to connect to uh, a site with a self-signed certificate, and I got. I got I have no uh, no idea what what the, the certificate would be because I have I have I have no way to to check that. Uh another thing is that we usually think that we we have bought the device so we are usually owning it but it's not true because on top of the food chain there does the manufacturer uh I'm reporting here some headlines from past news uh CBS reported that Apple a phone banned for minister in France, I think I can remember, or uh, Android Developer Forum, uh, which talk about uh, the kill switch they implemented and so on. Um, the carrier operator update, uh, uh, which burst, which was, uh, um, which was spyware, uh, and uh, the Black Hat DC talk at 
at the, about the iPhone privacy and, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, another problem is data. Usually that is stored in clear text. Uh, right now Blackberry and Nokia allow some sort of encryption. Uh, another problem is that data access uh, usually is all or nothing. Uh, you can access the data, you can access all data. Uh, what I'd like to see in the future is a fine tuning of, of application permissions. Uh, if you switch to the, to the communication side, well, it's not, it's not going to be easy as well. Uh, GSM has been broken, uh, UMTS almost. Uh, SMS, uh, well, it has been abused, it's easily spoofable. Uh, if you can remember Charlie Miller, uh, yeah, Charlie Miller and uh, Colin Mulliner wrote an exploit uh, with MMS for I think it was iPhone. Uh, Bluetooth, uh, everybody knows about Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and so on. And that's pretty. Oh, uh, that that is interesting. Um, th this one was discovered by Colin Mulliner. Uh, there are mobile phone operator which which are injecting uh, custom HTTP headers in uh, in the in the in the request your your mobile phone browser make uh, something like you know the I M E I M I I M S I something that's not really important. Uh, so just to recap this this part I was pretty speeding through. Uh, which are the problem? Mobile phones are everywhere. Uh, they are designed for call and text messages, not for uh, going out on the internet or uh, using secure protocols. Uh, stored data cannot be easily protected, and communication needs to be secured. Uh, I won't address a solution for all of this problem, but for the, this last one, uh, which is Tor, we can get some degree of privacy and protection using Tor on our devices. Uh, Anybody here who doesn't know at all how Tor works? Okay, cool. <laughs> that was our crash course. Uh, this is the story of Tor on unusual devices. Uh, yeah, the first time Tor got on the iPhone was December 2007. Uh, then we got a Chambi One on 2009, iPhone again on 2010, Nokia 900, and Android. Uh, when you are trying to, to port Tor to mobile platform or other platform that, you know, Linux, SX, uh, Windows, you got some address to, uh, some problem to address, uh, like, you know, uh, the available hardware or the hosting operating system, how easy it is to write or to, or to port the program on that operating system. Uh, the installation process is very important and the presence or not of a graphical user interface. Uh, this one is quite interesting. Uh, this port has been done by Jacob Applebaum and uh, Bunny of Bunny Studios. Uh, you probably know what that is. It's Chambi One, an alarm clock, uh, which, which has an ARM CPU and 64 megabyte of RAM, and they run on Linux, and it's wonderful. Um, this port is not easy to install, as you, you need the uh, Chambi One cross tool chain. You need to check out the sources. Uh, you need to enter the folder and type make. Uh, then you, ha you have to unzip the, the build on a USB K and rebooting the, the alarm clock with the, with the K inserted. And well, there's al always the easy way, which is just unzip a provided build on <laughs> on the USB K and and you are free to go. Uh, this port is quite interest interesting because. You know, uh, the Chambi One has very limited resources to run Tor. Uh, so they needed a swap file, uh, and uh, this is very clever. They configured Tor as a bridge. Uh, listening on the uh, 443 port, TCP port, uh, why they do this? Why, why do they do this? Uh, because Tor running as a bridge uh, will uh, will not be uh, so angry about resources as a full blown relay. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's no easy upgrade mechanism. You, you need, I mean, you need to, to uh, build another version of the program, put it on, on the USB zip, and reboot the device. 
But uh, this is very interesting. Uh, Bunny uh, uh, found out that the, there is an official support for Freezy data net for cellular data network in uh, in those alarm clock. So these are the achievement running to our very limited resources and an easy install method. Uh, Toro Mimo and the uh, Nokia 9 and 900. Uh, what's that one? It's powerful uh, IRM CPU, uh, plenty of RAM to run Tor. And uh, well, this was a bit easy because Tor is already already in, uh, in the Mimo community repository. Uh, how, ca how could you install Tor on such a device? Well, just enable the repository extras devil. Uh, Okay, th there's a big uh, ugly warning telling you that it's dangerous, but you know, okay. Uh, you just look for Tor in the package manager and you are done. Uh, how could you eventually run it? Just toggle it. Th this was wonderful. You, you open up the control panel, you, you tap on the on your router, and here you are. You are running Tor on your Nokia. Uh, what does this port achieve? Well, it was easy install. You, you know, repository are wonderful. You can install software with just one click. Um, better than than the uh, the Chambi one, you can even upgrade your your program. And well, this was the, the first graphical controller application for Tor mobile devices. Uh, then we got Torbot or Tor on Android. Uh, okay, everybody I think knows what Android is. Uh, Linux based operating system, uh, many different devices available. Uh, this port has been built by the Guardian project. Uh, how could you install it? Well, just scan that QR code. If you are running Android, you can just take a picture of, of the slide of the presentation and uh, you will be about to install Torn in, in a minute. Uh, Unfortunately, it's not yet on the Android market. Uh, how could you run Tor on an Android device? Is it an Avier? Toggle it. Um, another interesting feature about Tor on Android is that uh, finally there's it's fully configurable. Uh, you know, this is the uh, the screenshot of the configuration program, and it will offer you all of the options that Vidalia. Offers, offers you when you are trying to run Tor on, uh, on a full blown computer. Uh, and there's a, a bonus if you are running a rooted Tor device, um, Tor can, can, can do transparent proxy. So you, you, you don't have to set a proxy for each application, or uh, you, can, you can use applications which are not designed to go through a, through a proxy. Uh, so, yeah, the achievement is installation, highly configurable, and transparent proxy. And finally, Tor on mobile phones. Mobile Tor. Okay, uh, when I'm talking about iPhones, I'm really talking about iPod Touch, iPad, and so on. Uh, what we got here? We got Darwin, which is the iPhone OS, uh, powerful CPU, and plenty of RAM. And before going on, I want to thank the EFF for what, what they did. And uh, I also want to thank, yeah. <laughs> Woo. Thanks. Uh, and also, all, all the jailbreaking community for the hard work they are putting in, into this, uh, this stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, the main problem right now is that my port of Tor for iDevices is that you, you have to have a, a jailbroken uh, device. Uh, that's just because it, it's easier for me to develop. I'm, uh, I'm doing all my develop from Linux using the open tool chain, so I don't own an, an Intel Mac, so <laughs> I had to go the, that way. Um, okay, if, if you remember, I, I said that Tor on the iPhone was already available in December 2007. Uh, yes, but uh, there was a problem. The original port was made by CJacker1. Uh, it was built for iPhone OS version 1. Uh, he, he or she patched the sources 
to overcome firmware limitation, uh, the firmware at the time wasn't able to handle all the connection Tor uh, opens while it's working. And he shipped that, uh, that program with a copy of Privoxy and a graphical controller application. Um, unfortunately, Seajacker Wang totally disappeared. Uh, I told the tap disappeared with the author. The only thing which remains were the patches because they were included in the official uh, tree, source tree. Uh, so what, what I did, I, when, I, when I was trying to bring back Tor on the iPhone, I just installed the, the open source tool chain. Uh, right now I'm targeting iPhone OS 3.1.2 as, that, that just because it's the, the version of the operating system which, sh which is shipping with, with the phone at the time I bought it. Uh, and I'm cross compiling from, from Slackware. Uh, I'm building the, the program following Jay Freeman convention. If, if you don't know who Jay Freeman is, is, is the guy behind Cydia. Uh, uh, my sources are, are an overlay to, to his sources, so you can just check out uh, Jay Freeman, Sauric, Sauric sources, uh, check out my sources. You just copy my sources over the, the checkout. Uh, of uh, Teles Angelo, and you can just use this build system to, to build my package. Uh, and that's the address if you want to, to take a look at the sources and uh, the repository and uh, so on. So the new port is well, made by me, uh, built for a newer version of the operating system. Uh, it should work with uh, version 4 and so on, there's really no problem at all. Uh, the old patches were no longer needed because right now that the firmware is able to handle that many connections. Um, when you install mo the, the mobile Tor package from uh, CD after adding my repository, uh, you also get a copy of Polypo uh, instead of privacy, privacy. Uh, and you get uh, an SB settings plugin so you can easily toggle it on or off. And the plugin will, uh, will start both uh, Tor itself and, uh, and Polypo. That's a screenshot of the of the application. Uh, you just tap on the on the button and uh, you are free to go. Uh, what happens when you run Tor on on your iPhone? Well, you can get client functionality. Obviously, uh, you can be a relay. Uh, you can run hidden services. It's it's uh, it's working. At, it's fully working. Um, the interest is, interest is fi interesting thing is that obviously. You can, it, you can run it uh, over the wireless or over the cellular data network with, without problem. And another cool feature of the operating system is that uh, it's doing the, the transparent proxy thing. So uh, you didn't have to, to care about uh, proxying uh, applications. Uh, there are some limitations, unfortunately. Um, the operating system doesn't support SOX proxies, but that's no problem. We can run uh, Polypo in front of it. Uh, there's still no, that there's, there isn't still an easy way to, uh, to set up a proxy while you are surfing through the cellular data network. I'm trying to, to discover a way to, to do it. Uh, there's, there's a VPN trick. You can set up an a easy crackable VPN and uh, um, at the time when uh, when the iPhone recognized that the VPN is uh, is running, it it let you choose a, a proxy, so you can do that. Uh, another problem is that there isn't yet a t Tor secure browser, meaning a Tor which a browser which uh, which respect all the uh, which 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 protect you from from the from the privacy threats that browsing through through the internet pose to your uh, to your privacy. Uh, other limitations are that it's cryptographically intense, uh, so it's a bit heavy on butter and drain. And at least in Italy, uh, cellular data networks aren't very tour friend because you got rapidly changing IP address and spot coverage. It's, it's not that, it's not that funny, but it works. Uh, how's the development going? It's well, um, there's a bit too much fiddling with the command line interface. I try to reduce all, the, all these steps, but um, 
for for install for, for for installing the uh, the repository, you have to copy and paste a, a command into your SSH connection to to your phone. Uh, main user, according to the mail I receive, aren't able to do that. Um, there's a re really a strong need for a, for a graphical controller application like like Vidalia, and one well, doesn't need for a secure browser too. Uh, some of the future crazy ideas. IRM is working. If you don't know what uh, IRM is, it's the anonymity relay monitor. It, it was uh, one of the first Google Summer of Code projects sponsored by Tor Project. It's a, a Python application to monitor the your your Tor relay. It's screenshotted right here. Uh, I got planned to port Onion Cat. Uh, to this platform, uh, I'm doing also some work on TTDNSD. Uh, right now, the main problem is that uh, TSOX it it's a bit tricky to to build and have it run. And well, it it would be nice to to also try out this port on all the devices. I got I got positive feedback uh, of Tor running on uh, iPod touches and uh, iPad, but uh, it would be nice to. To have other feedback, um, I was going to to, sh to to show you how how to toggle it, but I had to do that on on the DEFCON Open Network. So uh, I just used this backup <laughs> backup movie. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, sorry for the quality. I was recording a VNC connection to my phone. Um, this is the mobile Safari. Uh, I just fire it up, go to check.project.torproject.org, and okay, I'm not using Tor. I'm closing the, the web browser. I'm opening the settings, uh, the SB settings application, and just tapping on the Tor icon. Okay, it's running. Both Tor and Polypo are running. Okay. Closing it, opening the settings, the system settings application. You just go to to your Wi-Fi. You choose your your Wi-Fi network you are currently connected to. You scroll down. Okay, HTTP proxy manual. Uh, server is localhost. Local host. Tip, 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 tip. And port, well, it's the default port for, uh, it was the privacy port, but, well. Okay. Now, we, if you, if we go back to, to, to mobile Safari, and we hit the refresh button. Okay, it's the address. Go. The network was low. <laughs> Congratulations, we are running Tor. Woo! Okay, that's all.